Well, my commentary today has to do with the issue of news, fake news, and media manipulation of the public in general. And I know you've probably heard an awful lot about it. What exactly is fake news? I thought it used to be a reference to those stories like in The Onion or some of the other satire sources, The Babylonian Bee, whatever, in which they basically are intentionally miswritten stories that are that, you know, somebody reading the headline might go, oh, my gosh, that can't be true. And as they read it, they realize, no, it's satire. It is not true. That's fake news. Now, some of those things have been expanded to include things that somebody doesn't want to be true, and so they label it as fake news. Other people, of course, just sources that can't be trusted, like, I don't know, state-run media from other countries like North Korea or China or even, dare I say, the United States. There, There's no officially state-run media here, but if you look at the way things have been going lately, it's like these different aspects of it, whether it's the politicians themselves or whether it's their corporate masters, whoever it is, it's like they're trying to keep us constantly in this state of agitation and worry and looking to somebody else to solve our problems. I've been sitting with some people lately uh, in the evenings, just kind of enjoying their presence. And uh, basically the news has been on and this news channel, I don't know if you've heard of it, OAN, the One American Network, the first time I saw it, I thought it was a spoof. I really did, because they talk like Fox News people, but they talk like Fox News people being portrayed on SNL. They are constantly in a state of agitation. They're constantly in their, not just their reporting, but in their commentaries and in their so-called interviews, constantly representing themselves as being right, and the other people that they're interviewing or that they're talking about in the news stories as being wrong, talking about their illegal behavior, talking about their unconstitutional legislation, talking about this or that in specified language that basically says, yes, uh, we know we're right and this other side is wrong. And if you listened to it, I know you'd know what I'm talking about. The, The way in which a person is portrayed when you use certain loaded words is important. And as a reporter, to try to get rid of those loaded words so that you just get down to the truth of the issue is almost an unpracticed art these days. Something else I saw on this channel that actually really disturbed me. A fellow was taking somebody else's recorded voice. I don't know if the person was giving a speech or if it was an interview with somebody else, but he was let him he would play and let him say something and then he'd stop the tape and make a comment about what that guy said, but obviously that guy can't comment back because it's just a recording. And he did this over and over. He did it with several different people. And it's like, well, hang on a second. You're not having a conversation here. You are taking another person's opinion piece or interview or whatever, and you're opining over the top of it. That's dangerous. It's dangerous because if you're not having a conversation and you're letting somebody else's words being taken out of context, being taken out of a conversation and then having your own conversation with it, you can basically make somebody say whatever you want them to say just by manipulating their responses to what you just said and they can't hear. I, my own mother did that way back in the 1960s as a joke. She, she did it and she was a public school teacher and she, as an end of the school year kind of a celebration, she took an interview that somebody had done with Robert Kennedy and she had these old... Uh, reel-to-reel uh, tapes that she spliced it together, and she did an interview with Robert Kennedy in which basically she was making fun of him. Then he got assassinated. And so she she obviously felt it would be in poor taste to run the joke reel that she had put together. But she, I remember her talking to me about that way back when I was in high school and about how easy it is when you've got a person's words recorded to take them out of context. And every time that I've tried to have an interview with somebody, I've let them express themselves. And if they're not expressing themselves well, I try to draw out of them what it is they're actually trying to say. I don't go back and manipulate their words. I don't take them out of context. I ask them to explain themselves. I ask them to answer for things that they have done that have been different from the things that they are saying. And I don't know if that makes me a good journalist, but it certainly, I think, makes me a better interviewer than what I was watching on OAN. That being said, that's my two cents. If you're seeing somebody playing somebody else's words and commenting on it, turn it off. That's my point of view. If you like what I'm doing, please support me on Patreon or 
directly on my website. You can buy a subscription at RadioFreeSpeech.com. If you have a suggestion for me, either for a commentary or a news tip, just send me an email, steve at RadioFreeSpeech.com. Thanks.